welcome back to the channel. I have another project here. I'm still working on this 99 Arctic Cat. It is a uh, 300 4x4. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go ahead and put a boot on the CV axle. One of the uh, boots is ripped up pretty bad in the outside CV. Um, so I'm going to go CV joint. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and pop the tire off and disassemble everything and put a new boot on. So uh, if you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button and the alert bell. That way you guys are notified of future updates of the channel. And we'll go ahead and get into it now. All right, let's go. All right, so this is the boot that we're going to be replacing. Um, it's pretty, I mean, it's split pretty good. So I just figured being that I had this thing here, it's for my buddy. I'm going to go ahead and get this taken care of. That way he doesn't have to worry about it. And uh, you know, it's not going to be getting grime everywhere. It's not going to be destroying the joint because when you have splits like that, um, even if it's just a mild split, when this thing's going and spinning, that space will come apart or that split will separate and allow dirt and grime to get up in there and then that gets into the the U joint is what's really in there it's a constant velocity joint is what it is um, is what they call it but that's the rear axle so um, these have independent suspension and that's why it's uh, you know one of these CV joints back here so all right I'm gonna go ahead and get the wheel popped off and we'll go from there Go ahead and get this tire off here. <laughs> Gonna have to pull this cotter pin out. It's like this has never been torn into. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pull these brakes off of this. The spindle here. It's these two. These brake pads look like they're still got some meat on them, so that's good. All right, now that we got both of those calipers out of the way, go ahead and get this guy off. Let me take the upper spindle off, see if this will get us where we need to be.
Okay, so we're in the process of getting this ring out. And it's a retaining ring. Oh yeah. There we go. There it is. So actually what we have here is another little retaining ring that we need to remove. And then this whole assembly will come off. Comes right off. Now the thing that we're going to have to pay attention to is all the grease that's in here. I'm keep that up under there. All right, so now that that's set aside, we will go ahead and clean this up and put the other boot on. All right, so this is just a, your basic boot here. And then it also came with new rings. All right, so I'm just going to slide the boot over, and then I'm going to lock the bottom, and then flip it over and fill it with grease. You want to make sure that you center where the clip goes right over this little valley here. And you just want to lock these pins in to their slots and then tighten these up. All right, let's flip it over. So this particular boot came with grease. So we're just gonna go ahead and put some grease in here. All right. Then I'm going to clean up the boot.
Like I've told you guys before, this is why I save my old blue shop towels. They come in really handy when you're working on other stuff, even though they're used. I'm going to put our last ring back on. And I would assume if you're in a pinch and you don't have another one of these rings, you could easily use a big hose clamp. And that's on there pretty snug already, but then you just tighten this up here. All right, so we'll flip it over and put the other side back on. This is going to be the messy one. We have the gear back on, well, the joint assembly, inner joint assembly. Now we're going to put the snap ring back on. We're going to go ahead and put the, the hub on. As well as the snap ring. All right, the snap ring is in. The last step is to just go ahead and slip the boot back over.
All right, so that is it. So we got the new boot on, the old boot back on. Everything's greased up. So we're going to go back to the ATV now and install this whole assembly back and get her buttoned up. Just going to go ahead and throw a bit of extra heavy duty grease. This stuff uh, does high temperatures, high speed bearings, irregular maintenance, um, farm equipment, construction equipment, heavy duty trucks. This is some good stuff. So the first thing I'm going to do is get some inside here. I'm going to clean the grease up around this area where it was leaking out. It's one good thing about leaky grease, leaky oil, is it protects stuff. I'm going to go ahead and grease up these splines. I'm going to grease up this race here. There's quite a bit of grime on this oil seal here. So I'm going to clean this oil seal up. And then put dirt, or put dirt back in there. <laughs> I'm going to put grease back in there. Doi. All right, let me go ahead and put our washer and castle nut back on. The axle. And our cotter pin back out. Next thing to do is just to go ahead and put the wheel back on. I'm gonna grease up this joint real quick. All right, so this is the speedo gear and the speedometer is not working. So I don't know if there's something in here that's obviously there's something in here that's not working. So I'm going to clean this off. See if I can figure out what's wrong with it. Okay, so.
So if I can take this out and it's just an easy fix, or at least tell me what's wrong with it, that would be nice. So you can see there's that little slot in there. And there's typically a square little pin. Let me see if I can get some pliers and get it out. If it's even supposed to come out, which normally they do. $3 pliers, <laughs> back in action. Let me see if I spin. Yeah, that's spinning. It's almost like it's not long enough. All right, so this thing should be turning. You know what I can do is stick a screwdriver. I'm gonna stick a screwdriver in the end and I'll be able to see the other end move or not. All right, so that is spinning and it spins down here. So I don't know, maybe, I don't know what's going on. No, well, that's got real good bite. So I'm gonna put it back together. Just trying to line it up before I put it back in. Well, see, now I have this in here, and it's not spinning. Okay, so that definitely moves up and down. Try and get it lined up again. All right, so that seems like it's locked in place. Let's see if I can see it turn. Yay. All right, good, so it's turning. So we know that everything works. So let's put it back together. So if this doesn't fix it, which it almost seemed like the cable, the flexible cable on the inside of this sheath here didn't want to move when I had it disconnected. But you'd think that that would mess something up. Maybe it's got a fail safe to where it'll jump somehow. I don't know if any of you guys know if that's what will happen. Or not. Make sure this is screwed all the way in. Nice and tight. And I'll check it one more time. And we'll get all this buttoned up. All right, it's spinning up at the dash. All right, so we'll button it all back up. We'll put these brakes back on. Need to loosen that up a little. Thank you. 
All right, there's that. Let's go ahead and slap this tire on. Excuse me, wheel. All right, let's make sure one last time we got a moving speedo cable, and we do. All right, so that's it. Let's go ahead and take it for a spin. Oh. Wow, it started working. All right, so just got back from the ride. For some reason, it's not working. It started to work, but then it stopped. I'm gonna pop that off. Pop the Speedo off. Yeah. All right, so I think I figured out what's going on. So what happens is this is popping out. See? And then it can be free spun. Now it locks. So I'm not exactly sure why it's not staying in there. So I think I'm going to pop that off and then see if I can maybe make a way to, I mean, put something in there to where it stays because it just keeps coming out like that. You know, see, so then you can spin it freely. See, there, now it's locked, right there. So that's where it should stay, because it only has to stick up in here a little bit. So I don't know if I could put something in here to keep this down maybe. Let me try that. Oh yeah, that fits in there nice and and snug let's see no 
And then I'm gonna, when I cut this, I'm gonna file the ends flat too. That should stop it from popping off. That long. So I'm gonna file the ends of that. That's uh, maybe 7 16ths of an inch. So I'm gonna file the ends so they're nice and flat. Then go from there. So let's give this a try. All right, let's take it for a spin, see what happens. All right, here we go, here's the test. So far, so good. that's it guys i hope you enjoyed the video replacing the cv boot it's a little messy but it's not real hard so yeah i hope you guys found useful information and this gave you the motivation and encouragement to replace yours so uh, it's not really that hard and i was able to fix the speedometer yeah the speedometer as well so it's kind of a little bit of a life hack i guess you could say not really the most high-tech repair but whatever it worked and that's sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do so if you guys want to know where I got the shirt from, this is a West Michigan snowmobile shirt. Um, if you guys know who they are, you know where to find them, hit them up. They'll I'll give you guys one of these shirts. Um, obviously, you're going to have to buy it. Not a big deal. They got it in their store, I believe. Um, but if you don't know who they are, that is where I get all my snowmobile parts and some other power sports, too. So if you guys haven't heard of them, go and check them out and uh, hit them up and ask them for a shirt. And, you know, tell them your size. They'll ship it right out to you. So, all right, guys. That's it. Thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate you guys watching the video. We'll see you in the next video. So come on back. Take care. And God bless.